Broadcasting from Cincinnati, you're listening to the Ringside Reporter Podcast. All the news from the world of boxing, right here. Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Now, here's your host, Eric Lorda. My guest at this time is featherweight contender from the state of champions, known as Ohio. More specifically, he's from Toledo, Ohio. He has a record of 12-0 and with six wins coming by way of knockout. He's promoted by Rock Nation. It's an honor to have Tyler, the golden child, McCreary, on the program. Tyler, welcome to Ringside Reporter. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. So, let me ask you this. Tyler, you fought Vincent Jennings in your last fight on the Kovalev Ward undercard in Las Vegas. That was a pretty big stage for you. What was that experience like? Um, to be honest, it was, a, it was a lot of butterflies. It was it was my first time for a lot of things. First time fighting in Vegas, first time fighting in a, in a big atmosphere like that, and on a huge card. So it was a little nervous, but um, more so excited, to be honest. Nothing like scary or that I wasn't prepared for, it, but we got through it. Absolutely, man. That's It's got to be nerve-wracking. I mean, because, you, you know, what was that? I guess it was your 11th pro fight. You're going in there, and I mean, this is, I mean, honestly, you know, this was the biggest fight of the year. You're on the undercard of the biggest fight of the year. Just to even get on that card yeah. is a big thing, and, and then to have to go out there, it's, uh, yeah, that's that's got to be pretty nerve-wracking, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was definitely a great experience. Absolutely, man. So let's talk about the fight for a minute. Uh, you won the fight by majority decision. I, I personally, I thought it was pretty clear cut. Uh, what was going through your mind when those scorecards were read? Um, man, I, I knew. I mean, I knew I could have did more. I could have, I could have stopped the guy, but I knew for sure that I had whitewashed him. I knew for sure, like each round that I fought, like after every round, I was like, "Yep, that's my." Round. I'm telling my coach, my coach telling me, like, yeah, just keep doing this. Like, this this is it. This is, You got this in the bag. But when the story cards came back, I'm like, whoa, like, one of these judges is tripping. <laughs> the, the judge that was tripping was Glenn Feldman, uh, who actually had a score to draw yeah, 57, 57 apiece. And I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm like, I, I even I, I even rewatched the fight today. And uh, I'm watching it, and I'm like, I, when do you get 57? To me, it was pretty clear-cut. I thought uh, Eric Cheek and Steve Morrow had it 58-56 uh, and then 59-55. That was more in line of 58-56 I thought yeah. was a, a little closer than it should have been. I mean, you, you know, you're looking at 60, 60 points, 59 points, somewhere in there. I mean, giving the guy one round is, you know, about, you know, I could, you right. could do that. But I rewatched Yeah, I rewatched the fight twice since I fought, and... Each time I just want the first time I watched it, and uh, I watched it with the with the, um, the sound and everything on. And the second time I muted it and just watched it, and I gave myself the same score each time. I gave him one round, and the one the round that he did win, um, I'm not sure if it was the fifth or the fourth round, but he only landed like two or three punches, and it was at the end of the round. I gave it to him because he did win at the end of the round, like the last 30 seconds. But um, I feel like I, I just destroyed him. I whitewashed him. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, like I said, man, it was pretty clear cut. I, I, you know, I didn't see him. He didn't land anything of uh, any kind of significant punches, you know. Uh, he would come in. It looked like he would, you know, kind of force himself in at times, but still not be able to land. I mean, you kind of made yourself invisible right in front of him. Right. Now, and that's more that's more your game, yeah? I mean, that's, you know, you like to hit and not get hit and, you know. Exactly, yeah. I'm a, I'm like, a, I'm smart. I, I've been in for longevity and to, to get in and get out, you know. I, I love the sport and I, I, I definitely put on shows for the fans when I want to, but I fight, I fight when I want to fight. I fight smart and like I said, I'm, I'm in there for longevity. It's a lot of it's a dangerous sport, and a lot of people, you know, die from it or get you know, hurt real bad from it. I don't want that to me. So instead of you know going out there and getting yeah, doing I, unnecessary, yeah, I would 
would agree, man. It's uh, it's definitely a dangerous sport, and uh, the less you get hit, the better, for sure. Yeah, and and, and it's easy. You know, like I can I can go out there and touch a guy and don't get touched and it's the whole fight. But um, I know that I know that's boring and that's not what the fans want to see. Um, but I mean, you got to be like a boxing expert to really like know like. Like what type of style I have? I have a I have a style similar to Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather. We we don't like to get touched, but I can I can as well. People don't know that. Like my first five six fights, that's how I fought. I always go out, sit down, and bang and get the guys up out of there. But as we got as I got older, you know, in the game, I got smarter, and I know like I, this is not for this is not for me to go out there and please everybody. This is for me. For, I'm fighting for me. This is for longevity. Right. You you mentioned Andre Ward, uh, and of course you fought on the undercard of the the Ward Kovalev fight. Who did you have winning that fight? Because it was such a controversial uh, decision at the end. Uh, a lot of people felt strongly for Ward. A lot of people felt strong for, strongly for Kovalev in that fight. Where did you fall on that coin? Uh, I had the fight for exactly how I went. I feel like uh, Kovalev won, you know, first, second round. Of course, the second round was uh, he, he scored, he got scored the knockdown. But I had Andre Ward coming back and, and winning every round after that. Wow. To be honest. Yeah. It was, yeah, a lot it was of, very controversial. Yeah, a lot of people, like I said, man, a lot of people had it uh, either way, man. They uh, you, you either had it for... Uh, you know, and, and it was such, it was one of those fights where, you know, you felt like, you know, I know a lot of people that called in said, you know, this guy got robbed or this guy got robbed, but it was one of those fights where it, it was really split, where a lot of people thought Ward, a lot of people thought Kovalev, and a lot of people said, hey, I'm, I'm happy with the draw, you know. Yeah, and it, that's, to be honest, that was one of those fights that you've got to do it again. You can't just, can't just let that be a one-time thing. you got to do that two or three times. So that was that was a good fight, and some people want to see, you know, um, a rematch. Want to see if um, Andre Ward can go ahead and clear it up, or Kovalev is going to come back and win by a knockout. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Let's talk about uh, Friday. Uh, your big fight coming up uh, in Toledo uh, against Jonathan Perez. Now he's thirty-eight and sixteen with twenty-eight knockouts. Uh, he's got a ton of experience. What are your thoughts going into this fight? Uh, I, I honestly believe. I mean, yeah, he he have he have a a, a good record. Um, it's because right, uh, you know, a lot of wins, very experienced. But I don't feel like he fought anybody like this. I don't think I don't think he, I don't think he fought anybody with my style and be. To be honest, my speed is just crazy. I don't think he's going to be able to keep up with it. Um, I feel like this fight is a – they're trying to, like, a little bit test, test, test what they got to see if I can, you know, keep up with veterans or whatever. Uh, he's kind of a gatekeeper or something like that. I don't know. But mm -hmm. and I'm, I prepare for a war, but I don't even plan on it being that. I plan on me whitewashing this guy just like I do everybody else. Um but I'm definitely I'm I'm not gonna say I'm aiming for a knockout like I'm going out there just for a knockout, but I'm I'm gonna make a statement in this fight and let everybody know that I am uh one of the prospects, one of the best prospects and I am gonna be a contender and a future world champion. Very good, man. It's funny that you had mentioned uh like you said, he's kind of like a gatekeeper coming in with fifty some fights. Because uh, that's exactly what I thought when I looked at his record. I was like, wow. I said, you know, he's got, you know, 38 wins. 20, I mean, he's got a, a ton of experience, and he's on. He's kind of streaky in his last five fights, but he's got a ton of experience, you know. And and you coming into the pro, you don't you don't have that you don't have as much experience, but clearly you're you're somebody to watch for. So it's definitely a, a gatekeep type fight, I think. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, I give him respect. Like I said, he. he He's a veteran. He, he's fought a lot of names, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, I've seen someone mention me on Instagram and said that he was a WBO Latino champion. So he, yeah. he he got he got you know skills or whatever. But 
I know for a fact, like, he haven't seen, he haven't been through what I've been through. He haven't fought anybody like me at all. I've been, I've been busting my butt in training camp. And I got the best coaches. I got the best team around me. I know these guys set this up, set this fight up for me to destroy it. Now, now, you mentioned that, uh, like I said, you, you've been working hard in training camp and everything like that. Now, this is your first eight-round fight, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Any concerns about that going in? Um, no. I, I, I asked for eight-round in my last fight. I uh, feel like the longer, the better. I get stronger as the rounds go on. To be honest, uh, I'm not concerned at all about it. I don't plan on going eight, though, like I said. Um. But if it do, I prepare for one. Um, right. But uh, there's no concerns about this being a. I, I, like I said, I asked for a round in my last fight, and I want to be. I want to eventually move up to ten to twelve. I'm ready to take it on. How far realistically do you think you are away from uh, fighting the ten round fights? Uh. This is this is a it's crazy because it's a question that I ask my coaches down there every every fight. Like, <laughs> when can I fight ten? When can I get a to, no lie today? He we were talking about one of my um, one of my friends, um, a stable mate, like my little brother Sonny Ferguson. We were talking about him. He recently got ranked number twelve in the WBA. I saw that. So, yeah. yeah. So I was talking and I was asking him like, coach, like. After this fight, that can possibly be me. I can be ranked, and I'm I'm looking for big names. A guy asked, like, who would you do with Leo Santa Cruz? I'm not big headed or anything, but like, I, like I know, like, I, I, I'm talented. I'm really talented. I'm, I'm one of the best prospects, and I know I can take on anybody. Featherweight, kind of see. Absolutely, man. So. I was on your Twitter account, and you tweeted yesterday that uh, it's been a rough camp. What, what did you mean by that? Oh, uh, it's been rough. I've been I've been training side by side with Robert Easter Jr. That's like a big brother to me, and oh, wow. I watched him in the recent camps, and he's like a machine. He 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 trains his butt off every day, twice, sometimes three times a day. So I've been training side by side with him, and I've been having some good sparring partners. Um, strength and conditioning been crazy. We even added women in our in our strength and conditioning. It's been a real rough camp. It's one of the roughest and toughest camps I ever had. I I never trained this hard. Wow. Wow. So then the eight rounds should be no problem for you. No, no problem at all. <laughs> So let me ask you this: As an up-and-coming prospect signed by Rock Nation, do you feel any added pressure not only to win but to look good doing it? Oh yeah, uh, I feel like that definitely added pressure, added a target on. Uh, but it's at the same time, it's motivation. I mean, obviously those guys seen something in me that no other promoter seen because they haven't came with a contract before them or anything. But I don't feel like it's like pressure to like uh, I have to keep up with my name or with my nation name. I just I just feel like it's a target because a lot of people out out there that's not blessed to have the chance that I have have the support and promotion that I have. So everybody wants to get a piece of me and try to take what I got. Right. So let me ask you, like, as a, as an up and coming fighter, and again, you're you're signed with a Rock Nation. So, in in your style, and, and you've mentioned before, like your your first few fights, like I said, your style is to get hit, and you know to hit and not get hit, and that's kind of your style. Do you ever like think as a young upcoming and look at guys like say Floyd Mayweather, or look at uh, you know and the guys that just bring a lot of hype to it, and just uh, you know and kind of sell themselves in that way? Do you ever sit back and think about maybe I should be doing that? Maybe I should maybe I should hype it up a little bit more? Or maybe I should act this way or that way or Get like a gimmick, so to speak. I mean, anything like that. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's funny. I was actually just training with Adrian Brown today. <laughs> hey, he's uh, another one. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. yeah, big bro. He came through the gym. You know, we had press conference today. Yeah, um, but 
I don't know. No, I don't think I should act that way, or I never think about it because that's them guys. You know? That's right. really how they are. Um, what works for them may not work for me, man. I, I just want to be and try to keep it professional and always yeah. stay humble. That's what I come from there, and um, I'm just I'm just happy to make it as far as I am now, knowing that this isn't it or this isn't even halfway where I'm going to be. I'm humble. I'm, I'm just grateful for this. I'm very grateful. Absolutely, man. So, speaking of uh, Adrian Broner, uh, what made you go with uh, Rock Nation versus About Billions? Uh, like I said before, no one came with a contract um, before Rock Nation. Oh and wow! I don't. I don't think that I would have went with anybody else other than Rock Nation. To be honest, they've been treating me well. And they they gave me that contract that um, I think I could have possibly got coming from where I come from and having the amateur background that I had, which was really nothing at all, because I really didn't do much. I never really took it as serious as, as I do now. But I was I I wouldn't see myself signing for anybody else in the beginning of my career other than Rock Nation. But I I do uh, uh, affiliate myself with. Uh, AB and uh, Robert used to do those my brothers it's, it's like family it's, it's nothing signed no dotted lines or no paperwork we just family um, anything I ask or me Robert used to always there for me period like it's, it's nothing giving or anything like it's just stuff that I, I never even put those two together so I'm saying it's just my family they look out for me they the reason why I'm on this car you know, we've been talking about this, to be honest. We've been talking about this fight a, a close two years now before um, Steve Bunny was the champion. They asked me, like, what do you think that a, a fight would be like in Toledo, man? Because our city is small. I said, man, this fell out. This fell out. Then I stuck in there. I said, but you have to have me on this. And <laughs> two years just two years ago, mind you, the Adrian Browner and Jay Z thing, they was like, Oh man, we don't know, man. You might not be able to get on that. I'm like, come on, man. I don't care about any of that. It's my hometown. We brothers. I don't got nothing to do with what's going on with that. I'm just Tyler McCurry. I'm just me. Right. <laughs> you know, and we've been, we've been down and it happened. So I'm forever grateful to about being and my brother, B and Robert Jesus Jr. Appreciate them, guys. That's awesome, man. I remember, yeah, I, I remember when the uh, the card was signed. We heard there was going to be a fight in Toledo, and uh, that uh, Easter was going to be on it. And my first question, um, I, I fired off to the publicist. I said, you know, is is Tyler going to be on this card? And uh, she says, not yet. We don't know yet, but uh, we'll let you know. And I just found out the uh, last few days that you were going to be on there. So I I was like, that's amazing, man. That's his hometown. He's got to be on there, right? Exactly. That's what I was saying. Like, man, it's home, like. I mean, I fought at home maybe twice or three times, uh -huh. but this history, man, this is something that we Toledo haven't seen in, in a long time. I want to say close to 50 years, and not to mention we got four, five Toledo ones on there. Some of the best fighters that come out of Toledo. We got the Olympian, our 2004 Olympian, Devin Vargas. He's coming mm -hmm. back out of retirement fighting on the card. Oh, wow. We got, our, we got another Another prospect, Albert Bill, Adrian Wilson. You know, this is just, this is great for the city to have all of these talented fighters on this card. It is, and and I, you know, like I said, man, I I live in Ohio too. I'm in Cincinnati, and it's the same thing when when you have like a, uh, the fighters in Cincinnati. And I was I was kind of bummed that Rasheed Warren was going to be on the Toledo card, not the Cincinnati card, you know. But then Adrian Broder's back in the Cincinnati card, so it, it kind of all mixes. You know, it all it's all good. You know, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, being from Ohio, you always pull for the Ohio guys. You know, so anytime a big card comes to Ohio or something, we're, everybody's excited. Right? Yeah, exactly, man. Uh, like the Adrian Brown fight, February eighteenth. Yeah. Everybody in Toledo is talking about that. Like Ohio. So one thing about Ohio, we support each other, and if it's in Ohio, it's, it's going to go down. We, we're always coming. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, and I, and I hope they pack a. Pack that arena, that's for sure, man. I hope it's packed. Um, let me just I, let me ask you a question here. 
being signed to Rock Nation, do you ever talk to Jay Z and uh, how involved is he? I mean, do you ever talk to him at all, or is it just like uh, you, you deal with other people and he's just kind of like the figurehead there? Um, no, I, I, he, 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 I guess he's hard to contact, but I never tried. Really, I never yeah. tried to talk or thank him. But I met him uh, in Vegas. Um, I, I wasn't fighting, and. He was real, real down to earth dude. He was way different than what I expected. Like, really? Wow. Yeah, like a, another fighter had asked him for a picture. We was all in a suite. It was on a. It was at the Cotto and Canelo fight. We was in okay. a suite. Um, it was a lot of celebrities around Beyonce, first Jay Z, and a guy asked him like, uh, "Can I get a picture?" And because uh, I was gonna ask him for a picture, like, "Can I get a picture?" But I didn't. So a guy asked, like, can I get a picket? He was like, oh, man, I just want to just give me one second, man. Let's just wait a little while. I want to feel normal back here while we all just chilling and we all just listening to music, vibing. Let's just let's just wait a little bit. And, uh, but I'll give you one. He ended, eventually gave him a pick. And I don't know if he, uh, if he seen how I was about to ask for a picture or not, but after, what, like 30 minutes, he, he called my name and a guy had entered had told him, like, this is the um, kid I was telling you about, Tyler. He's like, oh, yeah? And, okay, okay, I heard a lot about you. Um, then he grabbed me, like, come on, man, you want to take a pic? Like, oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I, I like you that a lot. I, I never respect JC for that. And like I said, I know, like, he's a busy man, hard to contact, and he got a, tons of work going on, so I don't really, like, <laughs> try to get in there and, yeah, oh that's yeah, so definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Man, well that's pretty cool. You weren't even going to ask him for a picture, man, and you ended up getting one with him. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and then like, uh, I always tell myself like, I, I get starstruck sometimes, <laughs> but not like, not to get a picture with everybody. I always tell myself like, I'm just going to keep working hard and one day they have eventually notice me and we they ask me for a picture or or somebody would take the picture, I was thinking that's not very good. I always tell myself that, like, I'm going to be big one day. Uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Last question, I'll let you get out of here, man. Where did the, the nickname The Golden Child come from? Uh, it's crazy. My mom called me that one day out of nowhere. Like, she was talking, because I come from a, a, a messed up background, and parents really wasn't around my dad. I never had my dad in my life. Now my mom was sort of in and out, in and out. But um, one day, like, we were just talking and he was telling me, like, we were having a heart to heart. He just told me, like, Man, you're my golden child. Like, I'm her only boy. And I've been through a lot, you know. put her through a lot. And I've been through, like, just tailing back. So she know, like, I'm the one, like, I don't know. She just told me like I was her daughter child one day, and I stuck with it. I, I liked it today. Like, you know what? yeah. Stick with it. Very good, man. Very good. Follow Tyler McCrary on Twitter at Tyler McCrary, and you have an Instagram, yes? Yes, sir. And what is that? It's Tyler McCrary underscore. Gotcha. All right. So get out there, and follow him, man. Tyler, good luck, and I'll see you in Toledo in a couple of days, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to the Ringside Reporter Podcast. Check us out on the web at www.ringsidereporter.com. On Twitter at Ringside73. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ringside73. Subscribe to us on iTunes. 